Good morning, world. Pretty early. It's not crazy early. It's 6.30. Gonna get up, get all packed up. First thing we're gonna do is go over to the pump over there and fill up the tank. And I want, I'm like really curious how much diesel I used last night idling all night. I didn't drive anywhere. I stayed in the parking lot right here at the Coldfoot gas station. So it'd be really interesting to see how much these listening use. Slept like a baby, I'm still super tired. My eyes are all bloodshot just because I haven't been sleeping the last few days. But I'm a little more rested today, and it's a good thing because we have a long way to drive. Well guys, here's our forecast for Coldfoot, where I'm at right now, and I'm going even further north than this. So um, it's negative 39 today is the high, and negative 53 is the low tonight. That's super freaking cold. Super freaking cold. Wind chill values as low as negative 70 today. And then tonight, windshield values as low as negative 75. North one around five miles an hour. That's insane. Well, let's have some breakfast, shall we? Oh, let's see here. Grab some milk and some cereal. Bowl. I keep forgetting to buy bowls every time I go somewhere. I finally remembered. Still cereal on my couch. Never get it out of all this sheepskin. So today I am pretty excited because I'm hoping to go snowboarding. We're gonna be driving through Adigan Pass and uh, I've, I don't know, I've always wanted to snowboard up there and I brought my snowboard with me. So maybe we'll get out and do a little bit of that. I think on my way back through, I wanna kinda take you guys through Wiseman and actually like really show you around. So maybe we'll do that on the way back. Go ahead, some trails. I didn't even show you guys. I'm such a tourist. <laughs> I had to get a t-shirt in there. A little bit of snow last night. Ooh, it is cold out there. All right, get some breakfast, brush my teeth. I think I'm actually gonna go grab a big freaking cup of coffee because I have to go in there anyway to give them my credit card pay for fuels. I'm just going to get a big old road cup of coffee. Oh yeah, if you guys want a t-shirt, uh, truckhouselife.com. I got these guys. Check them out. Oh, I got some different, couple different designs in there. It's a great way to support the channel and uh, help me put diesel on this thing or just freaking help me fix this thing. I just brought the truck to the shop. Uh, both the fuel lines are leaking, so I had to replace those. The right rear master cylinder was leaking on the brakes. The axle seal was leaking and it starved the bearings. So I just replaced like the whole right side of the truck. If you guys do want any merch though that helps support keeping this thing in the road, this is not a cheap truck to drive by any means, but uh, truckhouselife.com, I got it on there. I hate doing stuff like that. Sound like a freaking infomercial. But at the same time, this is my livelihood also. I gotta find a way to make it work. And if I find a way to make it work, then you guys get to watch videos like this. So that's the cool part. I'm gonna get everything kind of cleaned up in here and uh, we'll go top this thing off and see how much diesel we used idling all night. We'll be on our way. It's pretty awesome though. <laughs> cool shirt. I cut it up into a tank top or something eventually. I also picked up some postcards. I'm gonna send, there's one with like the pipeline in the summer and there's one of Wiseman. This is the town we're gonna be going through really soon. I'm gonna bring, I'll bring you guys around that probably on the way back from the Arctic Travel. Let's go into Wiseman and do a little adventure there. And here's where we are right now, in Coldfoot. So when I filled up at Coldfoot here, uh, my diesel was $142 for about 19 gallons. But the cheeseburger was only, is less than 16 bucks. That's crazy. That's insane. For being out as far as we are to get a $15 cheeseburger, that's like, it's pretty good. Well, we know the truck's gonna start because it's, uh, it's still running. That's the good thing. Ah, get all that frost. There still was a little snow last night. <laughs> the moon. All right. Oh yeah, a little snow. Getting crazy. They're running like a top. Sidle up. It's warm in here and everything. The truck still sounds not that angry, so I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's totally fine right now. Maybe it's happy. Maybe it loved running all night. 
it's like a 50 50 thing i've heard from half the people that it's not good to run your truck all night because of something called wet stacking so it's basically where fuel where you're idling so low that all the fuel doesn't burn off and uh kind of accumulates in your cylinders and uh i don't even know what i'm talking about i'm gonna shut up okay let's let's go let's go set this hydro chip back to number six all the gauges look happy nothing looks angry this morning diesel's idle really cold too if you guys notice the temperature gauge it's cold outside right now but um it's idling pretty cold too all right all right sweet looks like the sky is going to open up today so where we're driving today is the coolest part of the drive in between cold foot and adding pass just gorgeous huge mountains and just beautiful so if it's sunny like this, it's going to be awesome. And then maybe we'll catch the Northern Lights tonight too. That'd be sweet. Get all these trucks getting ready to go. See how much diesel we used idling all night. I'm really curious. I'd say half a gallon an hour. Okay, so let's think about this. I got here at 8 o'clock and I started idling from 8 o'clock to... I think it's 8 o'clock right now. 9 o'clock right now almost. Jeez. That's 12 hours of idling. Almost 13. So let's see how much fuel it used idling. Uh, 13 hours almost. What do you guys think? 12 hours, half a gallon an hour maybe? I don't know. So maybe, maybe six gallons it used? Yep, here we go. Five and a half gallons. So I idled the truck all night and it used five and a half gallons of diesel. Interesting. Better refill this heater up here too. That's nuts. And then the Wabasto diesel heater for the camper only used about three quarters of a gallon the last two days and it's been on 24 7 so it shows you how efficient they are compared to the big old 7.3 that actually wasn't too cheap to idle all night geez five and a half gallons pretty pretty much six gallons times 750 a gallon that's about 45 dollars a night that cost me 45 dollars to idle this truck overnight yeah that used a lot of fuel that is i have a 16 gallon tank so that decreased my range by one third if I just stay out in the middle of nowhere and idle tonight. So that's something to consider. Here you guys go, cold foot to dead horse, 240 miles. You won't find gas stations, restaurants, rest stops, or hotels. In fact, you won't find any services of any kind over this entire 240 mile stretch. In other words, if you love lonely roads, this is a drive for you. <laughs> um, let me do this math really quick. If it's 250 miles and I get 320 miles of range, my 320 mile range minus the 250 mile distance to Dead Horse leaves me with 70 miles of uh, just diesel I can use. I get about 12 miles a gallon. I'd say 10 in this weather maybe just to be safe. So I just did the math and if I let this truck idle overnight just somewhere along the highway and I don't go all the way to Dead Horse, I can make it that 240 miles to Dead Horse and idle for 12 hours and I will be almost completely out of fuel in both of my tanks. But I have a spare five gallon diesel jug in the back of the truck in the porch box. So that would get me the rest of the way for sure. So I think we're good. Let's do it. <laughs> That's cool. I just uh, talked to the tire shop dude over there and uh, he came over to say hi. I guess he watches the channel and stuff and saw the last video, but he said there's a cool trail that goes out towards uh, the lake over there. It gives an awesome view of the valley and all. So maybe on our way back through, we'll check that out if we get some time. Right now we're out of here though. Let's do it. Right now it's 9.15 in the morning and it's still pretty freaking dark out, but it's February now. So we're getting our light back. We're starting to get some light back. The days are just a little bit longer. You're getting like maybe six hours of daylight instead of like three hours of daylight. It's cool, the Raven's landing on the pump. <laughs> Here's the tire shop. If you break down, that's where you go. Do you like general maintenance and stuff? This boy's heading north there. All right, man, here goes nothing. 
Oh yeah, I was gonna switch up my lights. Dang, let me do that really quick. I forget about that. I'm gonna kill my battery to do it though. <laughs> All right, here we go. Engine's off. Let's move quick. So we're gonna pop the hood. I don't know if you guys remember yesterday, my overhead lights are not working because uh, I hooked them up wrong when I rehooked my batteries just accidentally. So I'm gonna rehook them really quick the correct way. I do have to disconnect both my battery terminals to do it really quick, so I'll try to do this fast. Pop the hood. I know the engine's not gonna like cool off instantly or whatever, it's been running all night, but I still wanna do this. I want my overhead lights working again though. Yep, I've gotta switch this this one to the other side, so let's do it. Try as fast as I can. Maybe I'm just being paranoid. It's probably all right to shut this thing down, but I'm not gonna shut it down if it's freaking negative. Ugh, this is burning. Uh, uh, it's cold. This would be untouchably cold if uh, if the engine wasn't running all night, but it's touchable right now. Okay, Ooh, sparky, sparky. Tighten it back up. Should just take me a couple minutes to fix this. Okay, that's good. Do not drop that nut. All right, sweet. We're in business. Everything is rewired. So hopefully my overhead lights work up there even though they're frozen solid. I'm gonna tighten that one up. Ooh. Ooh. What do we got? Yes. Yes. Sweet. We're in business. Get our lights again. Awesome. All right. Fire it up, old girl, let's do it. Start up. Yes! <laughs> All right, we are on the road. Wow, look at the moon over here. Hold on, I gotta get the good camera out for a moon shot. This is sweet. I'm gonna put my old mega lens on so you guys can see this moon here. Hold on. Next service is 240 miles. Let's go. I'm really excited because it's daylight and it's a beautiful day, shockingly. I didn't know it was gonna be so nice. I thought it was gonna be way foggier or the weather was predicting it to be super ice foggy. So we're gonna get to see the mountains and everything up here. Keep in mind, we're probably gonna stop in Wiseman on the way back and check this area out. I'll probably come back and fill up with fuel and then we'll go back into Wiseman and I'll uh, show you guys around that and maybe check some trails out around here. Creek right here. This is that creek that I took my whitewater pack raft down. I don't know if I did a first ascent of it or anything, but it's a pretty cool canyon up there. If you guys look back at my old videos, you'll see it where I went up there back in the summer of 2020, I guess. All right, we're out of here. Woo! I'm gonna run this one, then run that one. You watch. It's a long story, but back in the summer of 2020, or the fall basically, I left Alaska in August, or tried to, and I was gonna go on a huge road trip in the truck house all, the, all around the lower 48. And to get to the lower 48, you have to drive through Canada. And since COVID was going on, they weren't allowing anyone to drive through Canada. But uh, I was also gonna go down and do an MRI where it's way cheaper and see if I could get my knee figured out. And so I had a doctor's note, which you're supposed to be able to cross the border with a doctor's note during COVID in Canada. And they denied me when I get to the border. So I drove like over a thousand miles for nothing and had to turn around. And uh, anyway, I didn't know what to do. So I just instantly drove all the way up here, not all the way to the ocean. I never made it to the ocean, but I stopped up around uh, Attigan Pass somewhere and I uh, did a little bit of paddling back there at Marion Creek. If you guys look way back in my videos in uh, 2020, I probably would have released that in like the fall of 2020 or something like that. But uh, you'll, you'll see that road trip where it failed trying to cross the Canadian border.
Fork of the Koyukuk. My dad and I floated the North Fork. We hiked uh, 40 miles over these mountains with our backpacks and pack rafts and <laughs> in a pair of Crocs. We both were wearing Crocs and put in and floated floated for maybe 10 days or something. But it's a beautiful place out here. We'll stop in Wiseman on the way back. I want to take you guys there. It's a really special, special little place there. It's an absolutely gorgeous day. Super cold outside, but we can ask for a more beautiful day. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm doing really long road trips like this, I love not turning the radio on. Uh, I like just thinking and processing things in my life that I usually don't have time to do when I'm on a phone or working or editing or hanging out with people. Or uh, It's just nice to have space and time to think and process your life and reflect on things and figure things out. And that's one of the reasons I absolutely love really long road trips like this. Or just really long drives. It just gives you time to time to breathe and think and reflect on what you want in life. And uh, it's important for everyone to do in some way or another. But that's why I love these long drives. What about you guys? You guys should leave a comment down there whether or not you drive with the uh, radio on or off. When you do long drives, I'd be curious. I'm not saying I never listen to music, because I love me some music, and I'll turn it on every now and then, but for the most part, I kind of don't. It's done me a lot of good doing that too over the years, so. Wow, beautiful. All right, hold on, I gotta pull over. We gotta get out that good lens again. <laughs> this is just too beautiful. The sunrise hitting the mountain up there. What a day, man. It's gorgeous out here. I think that's, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but it's like Mount Sokopak back there. Well, I'm pretty slow, kind of 30 miles an hour. It's really bouncy, the frost eaves, and I'm not in a hurry, so taking our time. That's the thing up here, if anything happens, whether you break down or go off the road in a ditch or something, there's no cell reception. I'm sure you'd have to hitch a ride from one of the truckers coming by or something. But I do have their radio. I've got uh, a CB radio and channel 19 I can call out on. And I also have a Garmin inReach that I keep carabiner right there. That way in case I roll the truck, my satellite radio is right there and uh, I can text with that. It's like a satellite texting device so I can ask for help or whatever. But you don't want to get messed up out here, man. Just, just take your time, be careful and move slow. Look at this raven in the road up here. It's so cool. Those are the, just the toughest birds. I don't know how they withstand this cold. It's just wild. <sighs> Pretty chilly, y'all. Hey, hey, hey. Take a high of negative 39 today. I'm feeling it right now. Um, wind's blowing a little bit. I'm not gonna stay out long, but absolutely beautiful. I can't, just cannot believe how gorgeous the day it is. This mount, I'm pretty sure that's Mount Sukapak is how you pronounce that. I could be wrong. Um, we're getting along though. Sun's rising. We're not gonna have it long, so let's cruise on up. What I forgot to tell you guys this morning when uh, the mechanic walked over to my truck that works in that shop in Coldfoot, he said it was so cold yesterday that they actually snapped almost all of their fuel lines when they were trying to fill up the tanks. 
Uh, just when it gets to down to negative 50 like that, it's like you just start snapping plastic. But you guys saw when I was fixing this truck, like my winch cable was snapping when it was like negative 45. All the wires were snapping. All the, like any kind of plastic just breaks. I was trying to take my fuel filter off and um, it's got a plastic top and that was breaking when I was trying to loosen it. So uh, yeah, it's the cold just really wreaks havoc on pretty much everything up here. I was talking to one of the locals here in Wiseman, Jack, and Jack was saying that your leaf springs, like the steel and the springs, can actually snap when it gets down to these temperatures. If you're just like bouncing too hard, you can actually shear the steel, which is pretty nuts to think, but probably true. I wouldn't doubt him. He's lived up here a long time and seen a lot of stuff. Dead horse, 205 miles. Here, I pulled over to let this truck go by really quick. Road's rough, getting those ice washboards again. This would be horrible if I would aired my tires down yesterday. It'd be super rough. It's, it's rough even with the tires aired down. There's the sun, it just hit us. Yes. Whew. So nice to see that sun again. We ain't gonna have it long, but it's nice while we got it. The road's starting to get pretty drifted in, and man, it is solid ice. It's literally just ice. All right, there goes our 30 minutes of sun. It's already dropping. <laughs> that was fast. Hopefully we get up to Hattigan Pass before dark up here. I think we should. Wow, check out the mountain up there. That is so cool. It's a huge slab of granite. This is really making me want to go snowboarding right now. Might have to get the snowboard out right up here when we get to Hattigan Pass. Yeah, starting to drink the diesel down, but still get another tank after this, and then I've got that five gallon special. We're about 45 miles into the 240 mile drive, so got 200 miles to go, and I only get 160 miles to a tank. At some point, I'd actually like to install an aftermarket fuel tank in this aftermarket diesel tank. If you guys suggest one, drop it in the comments down there, but uh, I'd like to find like something huge, like a 70 gallon tank to replace both these double tanks. The tanks I have right now hold about 16 to 18 gallons of fuel. So I'd love to get like a 32 gallon tank, like replace both of them with like two 32 gallon tanks and then I'd have it super long range. That'd be awesome. We're starting to get up in the mountains now, as you can tell, it's kind of closing in around us and uh, adding it passes not very far away. North Slope Borough, the world's largest municipality. It's the pipeline right there again, and this is it. That is the Chandelar Hill up in front of us. This is where the trucks usually pull over and chain up the really heavy loads. Some trucks just kind of push on past this hill. But then Attigan Pass is right after this hill, which uh, if you look back in my last drive to the Arctic series that I filmed last month, um, I didn't make it past Attigan Pass. There was two avalanches blocking the road. There was five trucks stuck, five semis on the hill, and the pass was closed down for a day and a half. So I had to catch a plane and turn around and go back. But this time, we're going for it. There's the chain up area right there that we pull out the parking lot. I'm gonna go and lock it in four wheel drive, just in case I start sliding. These are the old school uh, trucks like this. You're gonna lock the front axle, lock the hubs. Let's get the mic free to lock there. And then you put the transfer case in four wheel drive and uh, that engages it. All right, I'll send it. Stadigan Pass, it's right up there in front of us. We're gonna go up and over these mountains, and down the backside onto the North Slope. The wind is ripping right now, it's blowing pretty hard. Luckily the DOT station, Department of Transportation, is right up here. I've got a buddy that actually works there. I don't know if he's there right now, but uh, those guys maintain the road through here. They're the ones that plow everything and make sure everything's safe for all these truckers to get up and over. And DOT is also the ones that uh, use their front end loaders and stuff like that to recover trucks when they get stuck, kind of like my last video series. 
Here's the gates right here that they'll close off to keep people out of the pass certain times of the year or if something really crazy is happening. But it's usually if bad things happen, the trucks will congregate right here at the Chandelier station at the DOT hangar. We'll go drive through here just so you guys can kind of see it. I don't think Chris is working here this week. I think he's down, down in Fairbanks now, but... That's where I hung out last time though when they shut the pass down in that last video. Um, I was chilling in there, it was freaking freezing up here. Crazy snowstorm. It's like 50 mile an hour winds. So I wanna go up here and do a little bit of snowboarding. If we can find a good spot. But the boys are out there working right now. They're up to something. And here's the gates right here that they close. The DOT will shut these gates if the pass gets avalanched on. But I think we're good today. It did just snow a lot and there were some high winds. So there's definitely some avalanche danger, but um, roads open as far as I know. Yeah, I'm gonna have to be pretty careful snowboarding because I can just look at the mountains and tell the avalanche conditions are not that great right now. So I'm gonna have to stand some low angle stuff. Oh boy, just about there. It's the furthest I've ever made it up here in the winter. That sign says to call channel 19, so let's give him a shout. Hey, just checking in, I'm at the base of the pass. Uh, Chandelier side about to head up, just making sure it's clear. All right, sweet, we're good. All right, guys, this is it. <laughs> we're here. So, just checked on channel 19, nothing's going on up there. These trucks are already topped out, so we're gonna start working our way up. You might be able to see the road, it's kind of in the sun kind of diagonal line, but it's literally going across the side of a super steep mountain. It's a pretty wild road and uh, starts right up here. So here we freaking go. spinning so I had to throw it in four while I was still moving. We made it. We're on top of Vatican Pass. Freaking sweet. Man, I'm glad I stopped and locked the hubs because uh, I was starting to spin in two-wheel drive and I had to throw it in four-wheel high while I was moving, but we're at the top of the pass. It's pretty windblown and sketchy. Looks pretty avalanche-y, so I'm not gonna snowboard here today. I'm probably gonna snowboard when I come back through. So we're gonna keep on pressing on up north here. What's going on? Cool. How you guys doing? Waiting for oil. Oh, wait for oil? Yeah. Oh, what's uh, you guys run out or something? No, I got a leak in that blower and the, and oh, the man. gear case. Just blew a hose or something off the top? Yeah. Just did a bring some stuff up. Right on. Pretty cool setup. Well, thank you, man. <laughs> is Chris working with you guys right now or not? No. Is that not? I don't know if he's off this week or what yeah. he's up to. Yeah, but... He'll be up uh, tomorrow afternoon. Right on. March? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe I'll uh, I might swing by and say what's up to him and see him in a hot yeah, second. We'll switch, but... We swap out tomorrow, so he'll be back up here probably about 4 35. Nice, tomorrow. man. Yeah, I'll probably catch him I'm heading up just for a couple days up north. But All right. Right on. Enjoy. Yeah, Timmy. Uh, Kenny. Kenny? Yep. Yeah, good to meet you, man. Yep. Wow. <laughs> Even that big industrial grade blower is just breaking out here. Freaking crazy. That's cool. I just found out my buddy's going to be working at DOT. He starts his shift tomorrow, so maybe we'll try to catch him on the way back through. 
All right, you guys ready to head down the backside? I could care less about going uphill when it's steep and snowy, but man, going downhill is a sketchy part because if you break traction, you're going. So here we go. Made it down. Actually, when it's this cold out, uh, the snow and ice are pretty good traction. It sounds crazy, but they're sticky when it's cold. We're down basically at the base of it. We're past the worst part, the steep hill with no freaking guardrail up there. You just drive off that entire mountain, I guess. But this is officially the North Slope. We're on it. So uh, maybe we'll snowboard in here on the way back. We're gonna see. But right now we're gonna keep on pushing. Still got a long ways to go. wild road. If you miss that turn, that's the hill you'd go off of right there. You might not die. I wouldn't want to do it though. I'm sure someone's been off that thing before. Well, we got lucky with the weather. Can't believe the pass is clear like that. It's supposed to be really ice fogged out today, but on here's the gates on the other side and the north side of Attigan Pass. They close off. You can't go south. So I'm eating gravel. There's Adigan River. It's all frozen solid, obviously. But you can actually pack raft. I've always wanted to pack raft this. There's some uh, kind of class two, class three whitewater downstream, I believe. Well, I'm kind of hungry. I'm gonna grab some lunch out of the back real quick. Ugh. of a way to stop that from accumulating. Well, at least I installed this door threshold so I can at least open the door without it hitting the snow like that now. Let's get some lunch. I already got some sandwiches in here ready to go. Just gonna pull them out. Let's see. Yes. Here we go. No matter if I do. A couple of ham and turkey sandwiches. I do need to keep moving though, so I'm gonna eat these while I'm driving. This guy's coming in hot, going to the pass. Pipe frozen solid. No? Pretty good. Got all that salt on top. No, it's cool. We've had several people on this trip, like more than I can count on both hands, actually, say they've seen videos and stuff. So, another truck. It's really awesome that my videos inspire people to get out and uh, just live their best life. It's, I don't know, that's the main reason. That's like my main drive for doing this. Um, it is becoming my job now, but it doesn't feel like a job at all. Um, just feel like it's my calling and I'm doing like 
what I'm supposed to be doing. So, there you go. Get our sandwiches, let's roll. Technically, I don't really have a spare tire in this. I do, but it's like a, it's a 31 inch tire, maybe a 33, and these are 37, so I guess I could limp down the road, but uh, I wouldn't want to do it. But I do have several plug kits, and I've got air compressors, so as long as it's just a hole in the tire, I can plug it. show you guys the surface of this road so it's been solid ice the whole time but now as you can see I mean there's like literally almost boulders in the road it's like almost cobblestone in places so this is what you're driving on with your tires and uh, this is what gives people flats pretty rough road luckily I have Toyo AT3s and they're in pretty good shape I've probably got maybe at least 45% tread life on them. Had them almost 30,000 miles. They're awesome tires, but I'm gonna definitely need new tires this next uh, summer for the next winter. Um, I'm not sponsored by Toyo, but hey, if you guys wanna send me some tires, I'd appreciate it. I'd definitely use them. I'll definitely get another set of the AT3s. Those have been my favorite winter tire I've ever ran. Really good traction. Even with a heavy rig like this, good traction. crazy is I've lived in Alaska at least 20 years now and I've never actually driven all the way to Dead Horse which seems wild I've been all over the state just never done this drive never made it all the way up here Damn, the visibility is starting to get a lot worse it's blowing snow looks like another pump station up there know which one that is. I know we're not too far from Galbraith Lake up here. Beautiful out there. We're kind of getting out of the pass and just out into the open. I believe Galbraith Lake is right over there. You can see there's a, uh, I know there's a science station. For those of you guys that don't know, I got my master's in environmental science. And I came fairly close to getting a job out there. I would have essentially been collecting goose poop and looking at the isotopes in goose poop. So I didn't take that job, but it's been a cool place to work out here. And back in 2020 when I did this drive, this is as far as I went. I stopped at Galbraith Lake. So here we go. This is the furthest north I've ever been up here. Wow, this is just wild up here. I feel like I'm on like a white moon or something. You know what's crazy is I thought, see where the sun's lit up back there on all that white? I thought that was clouds and that's that's the landscape. It's crazy, it's the surface. This literally looks like a cloud. y'all I kind of got over to the edge to let that DOT plow truck come by and even though there's gravel over there and it looks like the surface of the road is over there it's not so my mirror just hit one of those little flags that sticks out right there the road markers um, my mirror just barely clipped it so definitely gonna watch it I'm gonna try to stay towards the center and just not go quite as far over if I have to pass another car like that again this place is just so wild though man just otherworldly almost. Just absolutely nothing out here. Pretty much a one lane bridge here. I had to pull over and let this truck fly down this hill. Now it's my turn. Deep into no man's land as you can get. 
We're 120 miles from Dead Horse and 120 miles from Coldfoot right now. So uh, I've officially committed to going to Dead Horse at this point. This is actually slightly closer now. So we're just gonna keep on pushing and we'll see where we get tonight. I think looking at uh, Onyx Off-Road, see where we're at. We're about halfway in between. You can see Attigan Pass right there. And then you can see Dead Horse right up here where my ex is. So a little over halfway in between them right now. Did you guys see that? That was nuts. So I, I stopped here to get some drone footage and I was trying to capture the sunset over the hill. And I don't know what it was. It might've been a snow owl or I have no idea what it was. I'm pretty sure it was some kind of owl or falcon or something. And it was trying to attack the drone. Um, you guys might've seen it in that. I don't know if the drone captured it, but it like almost grabbed it and I dived out of the way and I was darting around and trying to get away from it. It's freaking crazy. I guess everything eats everything out here though. Absolutely beautiful though. Sun's dropping. Oil spill hill. Looks like you get a big hill up here. Some trucks coming way out there in the distance. Uh, the pipeline just hopped up in the hill. And I guess we are too. It's a big old hill. Man, hopefully we get enough speed. I'm still in two-wheel drive. I think we got it. I unlocked my hubs after I went through Attigan Pass because I figured it'd be two-wheel drive the rest of the ride. Get better fuel economy when they're unlocked. Look at these ravens over here. driving along thinking here and I think to me what makes hitting the road so special and taking off on a trip is just like this it's a feeling I get that the possibilities that are coming up are just endless and you can turn whichever way you want to go and direct yourself in any path and it's just the coolest feeling it's just an awesome feeling and anyone can experience it and even if you can't get out and do some huge trip somewhere just hitting the road you'll get that same feeling and there's nothing else like it Dead horse, 74 miles, Woo. closing in on it. Looks like I'm empty on fuel, so I need to go ahead and switch my tank over to the front tank. And that should fill us back up, I hope. Keep on going, keep on going. Oh yeah, sweet. Back up to a full tank of fuel, not bad. That stuff was caked on there. Let's see. Oh yeah, there we go. That's better. See you again. Ooh, it's cold. Get back here. Road's starting to get all drifted over, getting really rough. Er. Hey. Be that 
that storm keeps us up all night, it'll freaking drift this road over. I know DOT, I'm sure they come out here and plow it. Whoa. Wow, look at that wind just blasting right now. <laughs> Telling you, man. <laughs> Woo, it's cold. Ay, ay, ay. All right, back inside. I'm cold. <laughs> Woo. That'll wake you up. That'll wake you right up, man. We are officially losing daylight and it's officially turning into a blizzard outside. <laughs> uh, I mean, we're cozy in here, but it's getting kind of gnarly out. Whoa, I can't see. <laughs> God. That wind is indescribably cold right now. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been in wind that cold in my life. I think if you stood outside, naked for like five minutes, you, you literally die. I don't even know. Woo! Let's let that truck get by me there. Looks like another pump station or something right there. Look at all these reflecting road markers. This is wild. They have them super close just because this probably just gets drifted over really bad through here. It's flat to you. You wouldn't even be able to tell where the road is. And I've got my heater on blast right now. And I can feel the cold air on my left side over here. Just blasting from the side wind into my window. And it was supposed to be negative 75 tonight with just like a 10 mile an hour wind. And this is a solid 20. So I just wonder how cold this wind chill is. This is a freaking 10,200 pound truck and camper combo. And if I let go of my wheel right now, this car will literally go ripping to the right. I'm like holding my wheel to the left over here to stay on the road. I think we're gonna be cozy in the camper tonight though. We'll definitely start a fire in the wood stove and get it all cozy in there. All right guys, we're starting to get pretty close. I think we're about 17 miles from Dead Horse. And the place that I'm going to start my expedition from to get out to the Arctic Ocean is coming up really soon. Let's pull up Onyx off road. And uh, we're going to that Red X. Uh, we're just about there. Well, I just heard those truckers in the CB radio, and they were saying that it's supposed to keep blasting like this all night, the wind. So this blizzard is just going to stick around, I guess. Hopefully it's not like this in the morning so we can do our trip. Might not look bad on camera, but it is just, it's like 30, a steady 30 miles an hour out there. Looks like we are basically there, so we need to find the first pullout we can. This is where I need to launch from, so... Hopefully I can find something that looks like something right there. Well guys, I'm here at my little pullout that's kind of right on the river that I figured I'd be able to stay at. But uh, when things look like something on a map, it's not always gonna be exactly like it is. Obviously, I didn't know I was gonna be in a blizzard up here, so. This is where I'm going to the camera right down here. It's pretty solid. Um, I just don't wanna get drifted in tonight. See if we can find a better spot to camp. Either way, I've got to go fill up with fuel and then I'll come back to my spot. Sweet, guys, just found a really good pullout back there. So I'm going to camp back there and it's right next to the same river that's going to take me out to the ocean. So uh, we're going to camp there, but I'm going to go into town and probably fill this thing up with fuel just to be safe, just so I can idle it all night. Well, guys, we freaking made it to Dead Horse. I can't even believe it. <laughs> oh. Pretty awesome. Woo! So we're gonna roll up here to the general store. It's only open for another 30 minutes. And uh, I'm gonna fill up with some fuel. And then we're gonna go get ourselves a camping spot and cook some dinner. It's so wild just seeing like this oil city after we just drove through the wilderness for I don't even know how many miles. Hundreds and hundreds of miles. The only reason we're here is oil. It's just wild to think. And see all those all those guys are plugged into block heaters over there you pretty much have to plug your truck in here overnight or sometimes i guess they let vehicles run for six months straight here some of the diesels just pull them into the shop to turn them off but you don't shut your car off when you're outside up here 
on here's the Aurora Hotel. We'll roll up in here. We're not staying there, but this is where you stay if you're gonna stay in the slope. <laughs> Those guys just swung in that said they just finished watching my video. <laughs> Tell me where the gas station is real quick. Anyway, can't freaking go anywhere, I'm telling you. This guy's just <laughs> waving at me too. That's pretty funny. Oh, look at that, that's where everyone stays. <laughs> or if you're working on the slope, these are some of the camps you stay at. Bunch of stacked connexes. Here is the general store, I believe. All right guys, I'm gonna run in here to the general store before they close in a few minutes. I need to get like a three quarter inch rubber hose or something so I can put anti-winter gel into my rear tank. It's my little piece buster from the other night. <sighs> Freaking score. That was crazy. Oh, an Arctic Fox just ran right by my truck. He's like chilling right over here somewhere, probably hiding somewhere. Wait, there he is. Arctic Fox. <laughs> How cool is that? What? What a cutie. Just chilling right here at the general store. Probably not supposed to feed him, I imagine. Crazy. What's he munching on? Got himself a little piece of meat or something. <laughs> That's cool. Wow, I feel like a, a Nat Geo man now. It was really cool. The dude in the Napa over there just hooked me up with some hose so I can put this in my tank and uh, fill up my anti-winter gel. Here's the fox again. <laughs> That's so cool. That's cool. So there's a Napa in town if you need anything. A ton of tools in there. It's the Brooks camp. So that's where people sleep up there, I guess. That's where everyone's staying, or at least in this part of the camp. That was cool too, I didn't tell you guys, but those boys that pulled over just followed me to the station to say hi and um, say they watch the channel and all that stuff. It's pretty cool. All these manly men up here and here's little Timmy over here. It's cool that they actually want to talk to me. <laughs> uh, it's kind of funny. I don't know. And in high school, my nickname was Tiny Tim because I was really tiny. He used to get picked on and freaking put in trash cans upside down the whole nine yards. So I guess I'm just used to uh, used to being the little runt no one wants to talk to. The times have changed, I guess. And here we go. This is the, this is it. This is where you get fuel. Let's go fill her up. Process your credit card inside. Oh, crazy. It's where you pick your pump and everything. I'm pump number three. Your card, remove card. Processing. Sweet. Approved. Okay. I guess we just go fill up. That's crazy. I've never seen a ball valve on a. Uh, on a hose like that at a public gas station. A lot of you guys ask why I have the handle upside down. I have to do this because I have a flatbed and the gas tank hoses are really flat. And if I turn this the right side up, 
um, the gas will spill out. I can't pump it, or the diesel will. to this. So diesel isn't gel up tonight. It's been really cold. That's the stuff I use there. Hopefully that'll yep, go right in there. Oh, my fingers are burning even though I was wearing the gloves. You even see that? It's like my hands are white and my fingertips are red. Ah. Whew, it's cold. Wow, I just looked up the uh, Brooks Camp Hotel back there. Um, those Connexes. Basically a metal box you stay in, 325 bucks. They got a room, but I ain't doing it. I'm gonna sleep in this cabin. It has been quite the adventure today. I'm ready to uh, find a spot to camp though and uh, call it a night. That's hilarious, I just drove back over here because I just realized this is the dead horse sign the famous dead horse sign that everyone puts their sticker on at the end of the road. And it's literally just, <laughs> it's just covered in snow. Oh, I'm sure I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's see. The sign right here. Let's go to it. Dead horse. Welcome to dead horse, Alaska, end of the Dalton highway. And everybody plasters their stickers all over this. Some YouTube channels I watch put their sticker on there, but they all come in the summertime, so if you look at it now, <laughs> I don't have a sticker, and even if I did, I couldn't put it on there, so let's go. Oh, this is really funny. You guys look at that. So that says Arctic Angels Coffee Company. Look at the van in the pull, and like in the drive through window. <laughs> oh, it's cold outside. You guys know what the crazy part is, so when you drive this highway and you get to Dead Horse, you actually can't drive to the Arctic Ocean. They stop you at the security gate here in Dead Horse and they don't let anyone that's not working on the slope drive past Dead Horse and to the ocean out there. So you can take a tour bus in the summertime from like May to September and it's like $75 or something and they drive you 10 miles to the ocean with a bunch of other tourists and you look at it. But I wouldn't do that anyway, but even if I wanted to do that, I can't because tour bus isn't operating in the winter. So there's literally no way to get to the Arctic Ocean right now. There's no way to do it, except for what we're gonna be doing tomorrow is getting on the track bicycle back there and riding that thing out to the ocean. But we can't go through the restricted oil leased lands. So we have to stick to the river and go kind of east of Dead Horse towards the ocean that way. So on that note, let's go back down the road to our little camping spot off the side of the road and get some dinner going, get a fire going in the wood stove. If you guys look over here, you'll see that all the vehicles that are parked here are plugged in to power. That way they actually start the next day. And uh, we don't have a way to do that. You can see all these people staying at the hotel. Like those guys are all plugged in. These guys are all plugged in. You can see all those power cords hanging right there. So everybody's plugged in. I've got that diesel coolant heater so I can warm my block up with that. And I have a Honda 1000 so I could technically plug in, but it's just not the same as being plugged into shore power like this. Frozen hotel. Okay, we're heading back out of town, back into the abyss. Back into the storm. I wish I could trust my truck right now to start when it's this cold, but if you guys go back one episode, you'll see that I turned the truck off and it was negative 45 degrees out Fahrenheit and the truck wouldn't start in the morning, which is the first time this truck hasn't started ever when it's super cold and I had to tow it to a shop and let it thaw out inside. Anyway, I don't want to take a chance like that when I'm this far away and in this remote location, even though I'm here in Dead Horse, I still want to take a chance on that, so I'm gonna leave the truck running all night. All right, my friends, this is it. This is home for the night. Turn this off so it's not on all night. Unplug that, cut my heat down. Oh, I feel so bad idling the truck all night like this. Um, what I'd really like to do though, you can see I've got this hydrotune chip. So if I go up to number 12, 
That's high idle. You hear that? Idle went up, and number 13 is even higher idle. And what that does is just burn the diesel better. So it'll keep the cylinders from wet stacking, but I think I'm just gonna set my alarm and come out and kind of alternate it every now and then. And that's just normal idle, around five, 600 RPM or so. Anyway, right now it's, uh, I think it's about eight o'clock at night, so let's go get some dinner going, I'm hungry. Holy. Open the door. Getting quick, getting quick. Close the door. Oh, oh yeah, look at that. I'm frozen in here, but it's uh, 47 degrees in here. I turned my heater down so it didn't drink my battery, but I think I'm gonna get a fire going. First, let's go ahead and get the heat up in here a little bit now. Like sideways to the wind, but this is the only way we can park this thing tonight. Okay. We need some kindling. Hopefully I have some split. I think I've got kindling. Yes. <laughs> got some split already. Cool. You do not want to split wood out there right now. Whew, let's get a bunch of kindling. Oh yeah, you can hear all those trucks passing by out there. Whoa. What? What's wrong with you? What? Come on. Are you cold? Should be cold. Oh, it scared me. <laughs> All right, I think we're in business. Got ourselves a fire. Hoo -hoo -hoo, yeah. Lovely. We're gonna have a good draft tonight because that freaking wind's blowing so hard in the chimney cap up there. It's probably creating a crazy vacuum, crazy draw. Okay, I'm feeling feeling safe now. As soon as this fire gets going, I just, I feel safe. Like if everything failed, if the lights turned off, the heater stopped working, the batteries, the trucks turned off, everything, no matter what, I'm still in a cabin with a wood stove. So I'm fine, we're good. I can cook in this thing, it'll keep you warm, all the things. Speaking of cooking, let's uh, start cooking. Step one is Crocs. Yeah. Not bad at all. Undo my strap that's holding my oven from flying off. <laughs> I'm freaking starving. So I thought, what better thing to cook than tacos since we're in the Arctic? Let's have some tacos in the Arctic. How about it? Nice spicy tacos sound pretty good. Got some guacamole that is looking a little bit nar nar. Also, a lot of you guys think this is a cooler. This is actually a fridge freezer. Uh, Dometic makes this thing. Not sponsored by these guys, but I've had this thing for since I built the truck house four years. And I've had that thing running like six months straight for several years in a row and works awesome. Super low energy draw. Anyway, here's our stuff. Let's uh, make some food. Touch of olive oil. Put that olive oil around. Supposed to be a stick free pan, but I don't know. Probably need a new pan. Got some good ground beef. Let me get that going right now. And we need a spatula. There we go. Okay. Oh my god, I wish you guys could hear the freaking wind outside. <laughs> it is just. Absolutely ripping outside right now. Medium heat for the taco meat. Medium heat from the taco meat. Bunch of salt. So there's two secrets to making awesome tacos. The number one secret is put a ton of paprika, or paprika, however you want to say it, pecan, pecan. Put a bunch of that into your into your ground beef. I mean like, what's this? And by a bunch, I mean like this. Like freaking drench, coat, coat your meat in them. Then stir it. So salt, pepper, and paprika. That's all you need for the taco meat. So thank me later. Mix that up good. 
Chop all the taco meat into little tiny chunks. Mix it up good. And a whole bunch more. Paprika, paprika, whatever, pecan, pecan. A whole bunch of that stuff, just like that. Once you put that on, you're gonna mix it one more time. You can only really chop it, just gonna mix it around. And then once you get it all mixed up, do some good choppings again. And I am by no means a chef, self-acclaimed chef at all. <laughs> Not even close. Not even a good cook, really, but this is how you make taco meat, I promise you. Once this meat's done cooking, I'll show you the other secret to making the best tacos you've ever had. Well, that's not good. I've got smoke pouring into my camper from outside. I don't know how, but I think the wind is hitting this side of the camper and going up and circling around, making an eddy, so sucking the smoke back in somehow. So I've got to put this fire out now. That's not going to work. I've never had to do this, but this is what we're doing right now. It's going to be a little bit sketchy. Camper's going to fill up with smoke, though. I'm going to do it. Let's see. Let's get this big log out of here. Ready? On the count of three, I'm gonna open the door. Throw the log outside. Yeah. Okay. Whew. And put a couple embers down low. It's all good. Okay. That's all the embers. I think we're good. That was crazy. I don't know what to do though. Put that out pretty quick. Better go kick that or something. Let's see. Ah, chaos, chaos, oh, my door hooked me, come on, let go, oh my god, it's cold, buckle it, stop it, uh. okay, Holy crap. Ugh. Put that thing out. Ooh. Okay. Oh. 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 Windy cold, windy cold, windy cold. Oh. oh my god. It is bitter out there. Ooh. Oh, okay. All right, start cooking again small sticks in here so that's gonna burn out pretty soon. I would spin my truck around and repark it but I can't because then my truck's exhaust which is on the passenger side would be upwind and blowing all in here all night and I can't do that so I've got to park the exhaust so it blows with the wind but unfortunately I was just creating this crazy suction draft I don't know that's, that's nuts anyway even though the chimneys over here is sucking the smoke back up the roof and pulling it in through the vent right there even when the vents closed it's still kind of seeping through I suppose if it was like an emergency situation, I could spin the truck around facing the wind and then still have a fire and my exhaust would go go away in the wind, but we'll be fine with the Wabasto. But you can see the smoke still kind of pulling in from the chimney right there. If you look really close, you guys see it. That sucks. I wanted a fire tonight. We'll have one tomorrow night. I think this wind's supposed to hopefully die down tomorrow. It was only supposed to be blowing five to 10 miles an hour. So I have no idea what's going on right now, but I'm gonna put a little olive oil down. All right, get our oil. This is the second secret to good tacos. You just take your tortilla, spin it in the oil, flip it, spin it, and there you go. You're gonna cook that tortilla, get it like not crispy, but definitely like a little golden color, then you flip it. So you're basically frying your tortilla. All right, see how it's bubbling up like that? You go on and flip it. Bam, look at that. Unfortunately, the store when I was in there, I thought I'd grab corn tortillas, but I grabbed flour ones, but try to grab corn if you can. All right, there we go. We're gonna make a few of those for tacos. And there we go. Bon appetit, tacos in the Arctic. <laughs> I wonder if this is on manual focus the whole time. I'm so sorry if everything was blurry. It just is what it is. I'll get it back in automatic focus now. Oh boy, oh boy. Gonna be good. The cookie dough is delicious, these guys make. Now I'm gonna have cookies for the rest of the road trip. Apparently, if you don't live in the USA, it's hard to find cookie dough. It's like a really United States thing, apparently. I would think that, but I mean, by that I mean like store-bought cookie dough. Like you walk into the aisle where there's like biscuits and uh, pastries and stuff like that, and it'll be cookie dough. 
If you guys live out of the United States, drop a comment. If you have cookie dough in your country, that'd be good to know. I showed you guys these the other night, but these are postcards from uh, the towns up here, Wise Men and Coldfoot and everything, and the road that we drove today. Pretty neat. Anyway, I'm gonna spend some time and write some postcards, mail them off in Dead Horse tomorrow. Okay, now I definitely smell cookies. So let me get up in here. I'm not gonna look. I know they're good. Oh yeah, do it. Pull them out. We good. Yes, those are gonna be perfect. Can't wait. Yummy. Tacos and hot cookies in the Arctic. It's gonna be delicious. I need to go idle the truck up a little bit just to alternate the idle. Here we go. Look at the snow drift building up. <laughs> I'm gonna be like drifted in here tomorrow. All right. About a cookie or 10. Just kidding, I'm just have probably maybe two, maybe three of these guys. Oh yeah, look at that. Perfect. Mm-hmm. This is hard. I'm trying not to eat sugar, but I love making cookies in here. As you guys know, so haven't had any in probably about a month, but broke the rules this time because it's a special trip, obviously. So, so about tomorrow, what my plan is is to go out to the Arctic Ocean. Now, obviously, this is weather dependent since I'm in the Arctic and it's a really flat surface. There's a lot of wind that can pick up. And as you can see, it's really windy tonight. And tomorrow when I wake up, if it's really windy and stormy and blizzardy like it is tonight, then realistically, I probably shouldn't make the attempt. So even though I have Onyx off-road on my phone and I can make waypoints along my route, that way I have cookie crumbs to follow all the way back to the truck. And I also have another GPS. I've got the Garmin InReach, which is a satellite texting device and that has a GPS on it. So I have two different GPS sources to find my way out there and back, even if the weather is horrible and you can't see anything. But I think realistically, I feel like that isn't completely safe to rely 100% on technology if stuff goes south. So uh, I wanna make sure the weather is decent enough. And if it's not decent enough, then I guess we'll just have to try again another time. So hopefully when we wake up, it will be good enough to go because I just drove a long way and I've got the perfect thing to get me out there, that track bicycle. And it should work really well because of the hard packed snow and it's really flat. It'll make it really doable if the weather will cooperate. So we'll wake up in the morning and see. Hey, you guys wanna see something really funny? So I have cell phone service here cause I'm just outside of Dead Horse. Not really good, I've got two bars. So this is my latest video and I'm just responding to some comments cause I've got a little bit extra time right now. Right here, there's a comment that says, I'm at Brooks Range Camp looking at your truck in front of the store right now. <laughs> so there's some guy, remember the Brooks Range Camp? That one I filmed just right back there, right there in Dead Horse. And so I responded to him really quick. Like, yep, just filling up the truck and getting ready to do something moderately crazy tomorrow. So I thought that's kind of funny. Just uh, someone was in the hotel and saw me out the window that watches the channel. <laughs> it's a small world, man. Well, everyone, it's about 11.45, almost midnight. Truck's been idling almost four hours, and uh, I'm ready to go to bed, so I'm gonna start doing the shuffle and pass out, and I will see you guys in the morning. It is that cold.